Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And it is a busy lunch hour around the Alamo City. Justin Horn standing by tracking much needed rain chances. And Stephen Cavazos has a traffic alert for us this noon. Stephen, we hear it involves three 18 wheelers. Yeah, that's right. David Lee, as we get a look, 35 of an army. We've been talking about this scene for at least three hours now. Let's get a wider look from Transguide, show you what that looks like at this noon hour. We can see not much has changed out there. Unfortunately, it's a little bit of a hazy shot, but we did have a crew that made out to the scene. Our photojournalist Kenny Weezer was able to get some uh, some of the view out there and you can see it right there on your screen. Wow, it looks like one of those 18 wheelers was just sideswiped, but we also see another 18 wheeler on your screen right there that was overturned. Now, unfortunately, information is still limited, but Ken does tell us this involves three 18 wheelers. So the cleanup right now is still well underway and it is taking several hours to complete. We're also hearing it's about a 40 minute drive time just to get out there. So, you know, obviously we want drivers to be prepared and obviously look for those alternative routes. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. But this is in the southbound lanes of 35, not far from Fisher Road. Again, that stretch of traffic just continuing to build right there on our map, uh, stretching back about one mile. So that that is somewhat of a minor improvement. Earlier it was two miles, so hopefully people are using those alternative routes. But here's one that I would suggest exit Casson Road and then get onto Quintana Road and just continue further down until you hit Fisher. You'll be able to access the uh, 35 right there and you can avoid a lot of that slowdown. But keep in mind these are always subject to change as more people do get out on the roadway. Quick look at the metro area, other spots, just a lot of those active construction zones. So make sure you watch out for those crews, but definitely have to watch out here 35 at Von Army. We'll work to get that information, so stay with KSAT for the very latest. David Lee. Thank you, Stephen. Outside with live cam, we had some much needed showers this morning along I-10 out east. They kind of fizzled as they got close to San Antonio, but we're still holding that hole. We are, and you see there in the distance some clouds trying to develop. I think we're going to see more clouds here than over the next couple of hours. Nothing on radar just yet. Things are pretty quiet, but we do have a field of clouds trying to develop off to the north of San Antonio. My hope is that these bubble up into some showers and storms. We can see it here on the satellite picture. Clouds like these starting to bubble up and build. I think around Kerrville we could start to see a few showers within the next couple of hours and hopefully some more downpours building back to the east here where you see this area of cloud cover and before that happens, we're going to see some pretty hot temperatures. Incredibly, we are now at 98 degrees here in San Antonio, and it's only the noon hour, okay? So we need these showers to cool us down. Could we briefly get up to 100 today with numbers like this? Yeah, it's possible. We've got a weak frontal boundary, though, trying to sink in, and that should cool us down and also give us those rain chances we were talking about. Here's the case at 12 hour forecast. By 2 o'clock, we start to bring the rain chances up, and certainly by the evening and evening commute, we have uh, some decent chances of rain, 60%. Temperatures will fall into the mid-90s and eventually 80s. Uh, not everyone's going to get rain out of this, but I think we'll see some scattered downpours this afternoon and, and this evening, bringing us some relief, guys. Well, this noon, police are investigating several unrelated shootings all around the area, including one that is now turned deadly. We first brought you this late breaking story during GMSA at nine. Police tell us someone shot a man on the west side near South Brazo Street and Guadalupe Street just before eight this morning. SAPD now confirms that victim has died. Officers say they don't know what led up to the shooting, but they do say they found several shell casings in the area. So far, police have not arrested anyone. And San Antonio police say words were the weapon of choice against a man firing a gun in a northwest side neighborhood. They were able to convince him to come out of his home peacefully. Those tense moments happened early this morning on a street called Silver Tip Drive. That's not far from Ingram and Callahan Roads. Katrina Weber tells us why police say jail may not be the place for that suspect. Among this group of patrol cars is a collective sigh of relief. Officers glad they avoided a shootout with an armed man. They responded to Silver Tip and Whitetail Drives around 5.30 this morning for someone firing a gun. Even police at first had no idea who it might be. Called for Eagle to assist us uh, overhead to see if we could see anybody shooting from the front or the backyard or anything. Uh, we couldn't see anything at the time. Eventually, police found the source of the shooting, a man holed up in his bedroom on Silver Tip. The broken glass showed he fired right through the window. Officers, meanwhile, had called for backup just in case. Rifles and shields to, uh, for our protection when we approached. We didn't know what the uh, situation was going to 
resolved to uh, re turn into. With help from dispatchers, officers talked him into putting down his weapon, a peaceful ending to what police believe started in a troubled mind. They say the man will undergo a mental evaluation. He believed he was being attacked, so he was shooting in, in uh, self-defense. Some of the bullets found targets in a fence and pool across the street. As it turns out, not all of the close calls were in close proximity to that house. At least one of the bullets traveled halfway down this block. It tore holes through and through there in a parked car. Fortunately, no people were hurt, just surprised and a bit shaken. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police say two gunmen targeted four friends sitting inside of a car in a southeast side park, opening fire and hitting a 19 year old woman. All of this happened last night around 1050 in Pickwell Park off of Southeast Military Drive. That's just behind the Family Protective Services building. Officers say while sitting in the parked vehicle, two men with guns stepped up to a vehicle and demanded cash and property. Police say that's when the driver tried to take off. They say the suspects started shooting, hitting the 19 year old passenger. Eventually, the driver stopped and got help. The victim was taken to the hospital. They were expected to survive, and so far, no arrests have been made. Two women are recovering this noon after they were hit by bullets during a drive by shooting on the west side overnight. Officers tell us someone drove up to the home on Aztec Alley near South Zarzamora around midnight. And that's when someone in the vehicle fired more than 30 shots before taking off. Police say they found one victim on the home's front porch. The other was inside, both taken to the hospital. A huge fight downtown in a parking lot near Hemisphere ended with 10 juveniles in custody this morning. Officers haven't said what charges, if any, that they'll be facing. However, they do say the violence started around four this morning. Police believe someone involved in that fight may have had a gun. Officers found a person with a firearm down the block, but it's not clear if that person was involved in the fight. No one was hurt. Now to the latest on the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade after being the law of the land for nearly half a century. 26 states either moving to ban abortion outright or severely restrict abortion rights. 34 Democratic senators are urging President Biden to take steps to help women access abortions. And Americans on both sides of the issue continue to react to the Supreme Court's historic decision. Some protests were peaceful and others tensions did boil over at times. In a test of the First Amendment, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of a high school football coach who prayed at the 50 yard line, saying the school district violated his First Amendment right to freely express his religion. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. In a major Supreme Court case on the First Amendment, six conservative justices sided with a high school football coach who prayed on the field after games. The ruling said the Bremerton School District violated the coach's free speech and free exercise of religion rights when it suspended him in 2015 because he refused to stop his post-game prayers. The coach took his case to the court, arguing that he and other public school employees have the right to pray aloud while on the job. This is a right for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're this religion or that religion or have no faith whatsoever. The school district says Kennedy's prayers, some of which were surrounded by players at the 50 yard line, were hardly private acts of faith. The district feared that a prayer on the field would look like the school was endorsing a religion. Kennedy said he never asked students to participate, but at least one player reported feeling pressured to comply. I'm a member of a mi minority religion and I'm really sensitive to how one can be singled out if one doesn't pray. The First Amendment protects free speech and the free exercise of religion, but it also prohibits the establishment of religion by the government. The Supreme Court declined to take Kennedy's case in 2019, but the court's new conservative majority accepted it this year. This case marks the second win for religious freedoms by the Supreme Court. Last week, the court ruled that Maine cannot exclude religious schools from a program that offers aid to cover tuition at private non-religious schools. Emlyn, ABC News, Washington. Several road closures are planned around, this, uh, around the community. Still ahead, Stephen Cavazos explains what you need to know to avoid a traffic headache.
From border barrier construction, roving patrols, static security points to boat operations, the Texas military department presence along the border is hard to miss. According to the agency, they've installed almost 38 miles of fence and another 18 miles of concertina wire under the order of Governor Greg Abbott to enhance border security. But is it working? Alicia Barrera spoke to Texas Military Department Colonel Rick Nolan about Operation Lone Star and if there's any indication of a mass migrant crisis. In the last 16 months, 5,400 members of the Texas military have arrived to ramp up security efforts at the border. And it starts along the first natural line of defense, the Rio Grande. We have the skills, we have the equipment. So coordinating closely with DPS uh, and coordinating closely with local law enforcement authorities and private uh, property owners uh, helps us enhance border security. At least five different state and federal agencies work together to monitor this area of the Rio Grande and they can have anywhere from two up to 20 boats at any given time. And the goal is to deter illegal crossings and narcotics. According to the Texas Military Department, recently there are more large groups and family units crossing. So when we have 300 people, mostly in family units, coming across in this kind of weather and this kind of heat, you know, not just getting them to surrender and stay in place, but surrender, stay in place for their own safety. However, Nolan says his agency isn't overwhelmed and is constantly coordinating with DPS. 300 people crossing at, a, at a, any point in time, it sounds large, but that really is actually a manageable level for us to quickly clear away uh, and hand over to Border Patrol. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Most of the activity tracked by the Texas Military Department has been at night with boat crews working 8 to 12 hour shifts, each to deter illegal activity. Now coming up at the News at 5, Alicia Barrera has more on the total number of encounters tracked by the agency, which includes migrants surrendering and apprehensions. Let's get outside with live cam. It's hot already, but there is some good news on the horizon. Yeah, there's a front moving in our direction, but right out ahead of that front, some really hot temperatures. It's noontime. We're already up to 98 degrees. Hopefully some relief this afternoon. We do think showers and storms will be popping up here soon. The aquifer needs the rain in the worst way, down two tenths of a foot to 634.3. And your pollen counts just molts and they're low. That number may come up, though, if we do indeed see some rain. We'll talk about that forecast coming up. So you, you've been working here for a few years now. You, you pay attention to Weather 101 and you learn things. Right. And the observation today is that the rain is coming from the east, where most of the time the rain comes from the mountains off of Mexico, from the west or the northwest where they come from, but it's coming from the east. Wow, interesting. So the explanation is what? Well, it's, it's a frontal boundary. How about that, huh? Just the, hey, you've been taking notes, and I appreciate that, David. That's, uh, that's good stuff. That's <laughs> right. Uh, we are watching this activity actually coming in from the north and perhaps the northeast this afternoon just because of the way our frontal boundary is uh, beginning to move in and the way the flow of the atmosphere is. Uh, and hopefully we'll get something going here soon. Nothing yet. We were, we've been watching the radar very closely, and there's just nothing that has popped up yet. It's going to take a little more time, but I think by 2, 3 o'clock, you'll start to notice some activity on radar. And hopefully we'll get some downpours where you live. You know, the, the one thing that's changed since we last showed you this live cam is we're starting to see these clouds develop. None of them going vertical just yet, but I do think we'll start to see that by the afternoon. You'll see these clouds build. And then we'll see again some of that activity hopefully popping up. 98 degrees at the airport, 95 stints and 95 killing, 95 at Randolph. It's awful hot. Uh, the good news here is that with activity developing and with rain, that should bring temperatures down. Now, as I said earlier, could we briefly get up to 100 today? Yeah, it's possible. Just the way temperatures are right now. Satellite picture really tells the story here. This area of clouds that you see from Kerrville to Rock Springs stretching back to northern parts of Bear County and Comal County. These are the clouds that we'll watch that could possibly build into showers and downpours here over the next couple of hours. And that is developing along that weak frontal boundary 
Most of San Antonio, though, still looking at mostly sunny skies, which is why temperatures are as warm as they are. 95 in Randolph, 95 Stinson. This says 99 in Divine. I'm not sure if that's correct. 94 Hondo, 92 right now in Uvalde. Here is the forecast. We'll go forward to 6 o'clock. Look at that. Scattered activity, scattered downpours. Now, it will still be hit or miss. There is a chance that some of us may not get any rain today, but this is some of the more widespread rain that we've seen uh, in a long while. 60% chance this afternoon and this evening. Now, once the sun goes down, we'll start to lose our rain chances, and I'd say by midnight, 2 a.m., most of the rain's going away. As we go into tomorrow, we start off with some clouds, and we'll have more chances again tomorrow afternoon. One or two popping up at 2 o'clock. And then by the afternoon, a 40% chance of rain on your Tuesday. So more opportunities ahead, which is a good thing. The case had 12 hour forecast. We're going to pop in a 40% chance by 3 o'clock, 60% chance by 4 p.m. Temperatures again coming down some from where they are right now, with a 60% chance by the evening hours. Evening commute could be a little bit damp, so keep that in mind. And then uh, by the time we lose the daytime heating, rain chances will fall off tonight as we fall into the 80s. Reason for all this, again, there's a weak frontal boundary out there that's helping to uh, generate this activity later today. And it's not only here, but it's across the large portion of Texas, which again is very much needed. As we look in the tropics very, quick, very quickly, we do need to update you here. Uh, we've got a potentially Bonnie developing down there in the Atlantic. It's a little early to start seeing storms out that far coming this well developed, but it's looking like uh, we will get a tropical storm Bonnie out of this. This moves west, likely stays well south of us. There's another system behind that that could develop. This one has a lower likelihood though, and we have plenty of time to watch it. We're also watching this area of storms here in the Gulf of Mexico. Now a 20% chance of development with this, regardless of if it develops or not. It looks like it could throw some moisture towards Texas in the coming days. So this is a measure of moisture in the atmosphere where you see these orange colors. That represents deep tropical moisture, which can often give us some rain chances. That deep tropical moisture starts to move in Wednesday into Thursday, and especially across our eastern counties, we could get some rain out of this, even here in San Antonio. If it gets close enough, if it moves on shore close enough to us, we could get a little bit of rain before that tropical moisture moves north on Thursday. We'll keep an eye on that. Rain chances this week will be highest today, but we'll keep some in there through Saturday. You see Wednesday, Thursday, those rain chances could go up depending on the path that tropical system takes. Uh, meantime, as far as rainfall goes with the downpours today, tomorrow, maybe half an inch to uh, three quarters of an inch up to an inch, and then you'll have the higher totals. And this is through Saturday morning, mind you, uh, closer to the coast if some of that tropical moisture does move in. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 93 tomorrow, 40% chance of rain, 30% chance Wednesday, 95. And right now we'll just go with the 20% chance Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And by Sunday, we're right back up near 100 degrees. We'll be right back. Seems like everywhere you go these days, construction crews are getting to work. For drivers, that means taking detours. According to TxDOT, there will be several closures taking place in the area through June and into early July. Here's Stephen Cavazos to help you plan ahead. There are only a few days left for, uh, remaining. Let's start that again. Three, two, one. There are only a few days left in June, but we know that construction is going to continue into the month of July. Let's get a look around town and see what you can expect. Loop 1604 over on the northwest side. Yeah, this has been current, but bridge construction is continuing to take place on Friday. July 1st is when it should be wrapping up. But keep in mind, this is for those overnight or early bird commuters. Nine in the evening to five in the morning. Expect an eastbound main lane full closure from Kyle Seal Parkway to Chase Hill Boulevard. We're going to continue to see work here off US 90 in Bear County. County metal guard fence installation. This time it will last all the way up into July 1st, 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. And it's during that time you can expect a single main lane closure in both directions there at Montgomery Road. We know that tends to be a busy spot for those early bird commuters as well. Let's get one last look here at State Highway 123 in Guadalupe County. Striping operations. This will start on Tuesday. That's June 28th. That also will be wrapping up on Friday, July 1st. And it's during that time, 8 in the evening, 8 in the morning, that is, to 
30 in the afternoon. Single lane closures in both directions from Angel Lane to FM 477. But if you'd like to find the latest list of closures, grab your phones and open your camera app. Scan this QR code. That's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. We have a list of closures that is updated each and every week. Just don't forget to scroll to the bottom of the page. Some helpful information there. If you're planning on flying soon for those summer vacations, make sure you also plan on getting to the airport early as things might move a little slower. And it's not just because more folks are taking trips. That's ahead in the next half hour. A gene typically associated with breast cancer could carry risks for women and men. We've got the details coming up in the next half hour. New today at five, plant-based meats are growing in popularity at the grocery store, but are they really healthy for you? Take uh, Today at five, we'll take a look at the nutrition and which ones taste like real meat. Going and taking another look outside today. Look at that blue sky. You know what I want to see instead? Some rain coming down, but you know, there's a chance. Keeping the hope alive. There's a chance. Uh, you know, right now we are still looking at partly cloudy skies. We see the clouds are in the distance. No rain yet. The satellite picture shows we've got some developing clouds here, but again, nothing rain wise on the radar. And I know we're all kind of waiting, waiting. Where is the rain? Uh, once we get into the afternoon, I think these clouds will begin to bubble up into some downpours, and we're seeing more and more of these clouds develop. It's going to take a little while longer, but I do think the radar becomes somewhat active this afternoon, and hopefully we get some rain here around San Antonio and surrounding areas and places that desperately need it. There's a look at the radar again. There's nothing there. Uh, we'll keep a close eye on it. We would expect that you'll start to see some small pop ups here within the next couple of hours, and then it becomes a little more widespread as we get into the late afternoon and evening hours. Temperatures 98 degrees at the airport, 97 Gonzalez, 96 Pleasanton, 94 Hondo. It's a very hot early afternoon here. Temperatures have really spiked out ahead of a cold front or a weak frontal battery, and that's what's helping or hopefully will generate those showers and storms a little bit later today. It will cool us down some tomorrow, too, thankfully. Here's how rain chances play out today. I think by 2 p.m., we start to see some of those showers or downpours develop, and then we bring the rain chances up close to 60% by the uh, evening hours. So the evening commute could be affected. Just a heads up there. Well, more on that forecast, plus potential for some tropical moisture too. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Great news. Thank you, Justin. Now to the G7 summit where President Biden is meeting with key allies to discuss the war in Ukraine. ABC's Karen Travers reports what the Biden administration is doing to help aid Ukraine in the war against Russia. The war in Ukraine at the top of the agenda today for President Biden at the G7 summit. President Zelensky speaking virtually to the president and key U.S. allies. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan telling reporters Zelensky's number one request was more air defense. At the top of his mind was the set of missile strikes that took place in Kyiv and uh, other cities across Ukraine and, and his desire to get additional air defense capabilities that could shoot down Russian missiles out of the sky. Those Russian airstrikes on Sunday on residential buildings in the capital of Kyiv, leaving one person dead and injuring seven. President Biden telling me More than barbarous. Zelensky's request for air defense will be met. The Biden administration announcing today it will send Ukraine an advanced surface to air missile defense system that can hit targets 100 miles away. The administration also announcing additional military aid, including artillery ammunition and counter battery radars. The U.S. is also committing $7.5 billion, part of a larger G7 effort to help the Ukrainian government with immediate budget issues. President Biden and the G7 leaders also keeping up their pressure campaign on Russia, closing in on a plan to implement a price cap on Russian oil to try and force down its price. The latest attempt to cut off Vladimir Putin's ability to fund his war in Ukraine. The Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade looms large over President Biden's trip. Several of the leaders he's meeting with have publicly criticized the ruling. I asked the president on Sunday if they had brought it up with him. He said no, it's not related to Ukraine and the issues being discussed. Karen Travers, ABC News, Telfs, Austria. 2.4 million people passed through security checkpoints on Sunday. That's a pandemic high. That's the highest since February 2020, before the pandemic tanked travel demands. The surge continues as more flight cancellations are being seen 
and airlines struggling with staffing shortages. More than 800 flights were canceled Sunday. That's according to a flight tracking site. And on Monday, nearly 700 flights have already been canceled. Speaking of the pandemic, new COVID cases are holding steady in the U.S. despite a slight rise in hospitalizations last week. According to John Hopkins University, there have been 105,000 new daily cases over the past two weeks, and daily COVID-related deaths have been hitting a plateau with about 300 per day. Researchers say daily cases dropped in half in the Northeast over the last month. Vaccination rates are showing 67% of the U.S. population has had at least two shots, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and less than a third of the population has had a booster. The U.S. Supreme Court is siding with two doctors in a case dealing with opioids. The doctors had been convicted of prescribing drugs without having valid medical reasons, a violation of federal law. However, the attorneys representing them appealed the conviction, saying a jury should have been able to determine whether the doctors were acting within what they thought were their professional boundaries. The government said a standard wasn't necessary. The high court's ruling was unanimous, but the justices were split in a 6-3 vote regarding the legal rationale. It is a genetic mutation that could put you at risk for certain cancers. While most people associate BRCA, commonly referred to as BRCA, with breast cancer, the gene can carry risks for both men and women. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on a push to get more men to talk to their doctors in honor of National Men's Health Month. At age 61, Steve Callister's father lost his battle to an aggressive form of prostate cancer. You know, I've long had um, concerns about uh, what my risk might be. Now, Callister's a father to nine-year-old twins. I'm 50 years old now and, you know, certainly want to be around uh, for my family. And That's why he decided to get genetic testing done. It did come back as BRCA2 positive. Having that gene mutation increases risk of certain cancers, including prostate, pancreas, and breast. Hereditary cancer can be inherited from your mom or your dad, whether you're a male or a female. So, for example, if you're a male who's coming to see me, you can inherit cancer risk from your mother. Hi, Steve. How are you today? That's why Lindsay Byrne, licensed genetic counselor at Ohio State University College of Medicine, says it's important to know your family health history on all sides. If there's cancer in your family, she says talk to a doctor about whether genetic testing is right for you. It helps us to know who's at higher risk and when to start screening. Since his test results, Callister has changed his lifestyle to limit his risks and make sure he gets routine tests done every year. It really is kind of a knowledge is power um, thing for me. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. The genetic counselor says testing results typically are done through blood or saliva and results usually come back within two to three weeks. A company wants folks to have their crab cakes and, well, to drink them too. A look at a crabby new product it's releasing still ahead. And some local high school students taking part in agri-science. It's a magnet program, how it's teaching them discipline, responsibility, and a lot more. Some umbrellas sold at Costco stores now under a recall due to safety concerns. We have the details after the break. your top headlines from Cheddar News. Period tracking app Flow is launching an anonymous mode to address new privacy concerns following the decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. The company says the setting will remove all personal identity from user accounts. Privacy advocates have warned that the data collected by the app could be used to investigate people seeking abortions. Love the smell of bacon? Now you can smell like it too. Bacon company Right Brand is launching a new fragrance called Right Number 100. The scent contains notes of bacon, applewood, bergamot, white patchouli, sandalwood, and maple syrup. It was created to celebrate the company's 100th year and sells for $19. The World Health Organization says monkeypox is not a global health emergency. The WHO convened an emergency meeting over the weekend to study the threat, but did not activate its highest alert level. Currently, only COVID-19 and polio are considered global health emergencies. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Chloe Aiello in New York.
Well, umbrellas sold at Costco are now being recalled. That's because of an issue that could cause fires. The solar powered umbrellas are made by Sun Villa Corp. The issue lies with the batteries inside the umbrellas solar panels. They can overheat to a point that a fire could start. Customers are advised to return the umbrellas where they bought them for a full refund. The Consumer Product Safety Commission reports these items were sold exclusively at Costco stores in the U.S. and Canada from December 2020 through May 2022. A mystery on the moon after NASA astronomers discovered a rocket on a collision course last year. They question which country is responsible for the rocket that crashed into the moon and why did it leave two craters? This is the first time a rocket has caused two craters. The crash happened on March 4th. NASA says two large masses on each end of the rocket may have caused the craters. So far, no nation has taken responsibility for the rocket. All right, this story is an interesting one. We're calling all seafood lovers for it. There's a new crab tasting whiskey being sold in the Northeast. It's called the Crab Trapper. Tamworth Distilling and the University of New Hampshire teamed up to create a drink with a taste of a green crab. Officials say these crabs have been a terror to much of New England's coastal ecosystem for more than two centuries. They are known to prey on other species and destroy their habitats. Crab Trapper is made with a bourbon base and costs $65 each. You can purchase the crab tasting whiskey on Tamworth's website. So yeah, we were saying their solution is just to drink the crabs uh, and then maybe that'll that'll uh, help solve the problem there. Uh, I guess if you're from the Northeast and that's your kind of thing, then, you know, go for it. Dude. Sounds awful. Yeah. Crab trapper. Also, that looks like a, vi uh, you know, I'm going to bring money into this, but it was it's a very small bottle. It does look a little small. 65 bucks. You got a whole crab in there, though. Whole crab. <laughs> How it must not be a very big crab. <laughs> no. Uh, 68, uh, 68, I wish, uh, 98 degrees so far today. 78 was low this morning. We are already well above average. The record is 105, say back in 1980. I don't think we get there today. We could get close to 100. We're still waiting on some of those showers and downpours to develop. We'll have another radar update for you coming up. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. San Antonio is known as Military City USA, where every enlisted Air Force recruit starts their basic training at Lackland Air Force Base. What's it feel like? Be it's eight fire. weeks of training that transform a civilian into a United States Airman. And so this is where their, their Air Force career starts, and then it's also kind of the gateway into going further into their Air Force career. So they start here and they graduate here um, throughout basic training. They put blood, sweat, and tears onto all these drill pads, um, changed who they are as an individual to become a better individual here at Lackland Air Force Base. And on graduation day, just seeing how proud everyone in the stands is, how much taller they stand up on graduation day, how much taller you stand up as well, just seeing that they, they set their mind to something and they were able to accomplish it. And now they're gonna go out and do amazing things for our Air Force. So this morning we got a little taste. It came mm -hmm. right down I-10 from the east, over Schulenburg, headed down I-10, and then it gets fizzled out. We got San Antonio, but no. it kind of teased us. But we got a little taste. We're gonna get more later, though. Keeping our fingers crossed, keeping everything crossed. Yes, we need all of it. We need the rain, and yes, uh, hopefully luck is on our side today because we need these showers and storms to really. Uh, get going here soon. So far, we haven't seen much out there. Uh, some more and more clouds uh, trying to develop, though, and that is a good sign. And I do think that uh, we'll get uh, activity on the radar here within the next couple of hours. 98 degrees at the airport. Thankfully, the dew points down some. It's at 60. We've got a north northeasterly breeze at around 12 now. That's associated with that weak frontal boundary that's trying to come in and hopefully cools this temperature down, too. Uh, we should see the numbers fall into the mid to lower 90s by the afternoon. As we look at the satellite picture, clouds really starting to get going there. Maybe one return there around Kerrville starting to show maybe a shower there. And I think we're going to see more and more of that here over the coming hours as these clouds build. And uh, we should get uh, a, a nice area of some showers and storms this afternoon. Now, it will be hit or miss. Not everyone's going to get rain, but some of us will. And uh, man, that is a sight for sore eyes. 97 degrees, Bolverde, 96 in New Braunfels. These numbers are hot. 95 stints in 97 down there in Pleasanton, still mostly sunny for you. And as we look at the live radar here, we mentioned uh, 
maybe a light return starting to show up on Kerrville, not showing up here on our radar. But I do think that you'll start to see some pop up showers here uh, again soon. And here's what the forecast is showing by two, three o'clock. You start to get that, then it really expands by 6 p.m. 60% chance of rain. Some of these downpours, light and thunder, no severe weather today. This is just good rain, which is what we could uh, all we could hope for really at this point. And then by tonight, with the loss of daytime heating, you'll start to see a lot of this activity go away. We start off mostly cloudy tomorrow, and then we get another chance for showers and storms on your Tuesday. Isolated stuff around 2 o'clock, and then by the afternoon, 40% chance of rain. If you have soccer practice, or whatever sports practice you have tonight, tomorrow evening. Don't cancel them, but just be aware that this stuff's going to be around. It could also affect the uh, evening commutes as well. Here's a case at 12 hour forecast. 30% chance 2 p.m. 40% chance at 3 o'clock and then a 60% chance 4 to 5, 6 p.m. before those rain chances begin to fall off with the loss of our daytime heating. Tonight we're just going to look at about a 20 to 30% chance I think most of that goes away by midnight. I mentioned that wheat funnel boundary. It is making a difference with temperatures. It's in the 70s. Places like Lubbock and Amarillo, 78, Midland, 80s just north of us. We're still within the really hot stuff down here, but that does change. I think tomorrow will be cooler. I mean, we're talking low 90s versus upper 90s, but every little bit helps. And the uh, big picture here, you'll notice there's not a lot going on just yet, but we are watching What's going on here in the Gulf of Mexico as well? This little area of showers and storms being monitored by the Hurricane Center for some development. Look, it's going to run out of real estate. It, there's not a lot of time for this to develop. What we're hoping for is that we get something fairly disorganized so it can throw some tropical moisture in our direction. And what you're looking at here is a measure of moisture in the atmosphere. When you see these oranges and yellows, that represents deep tropical moisture. The more of that we get, the better chance we have for rain. So this is just one of our computer models. But as we take you into Wednesday night into Thursday, it does want to throw some of that tropical moisture in our direction with the best shot being east of San Antonio through Thursday. So uh, if that does happen, we can see some pretty decent rainfall totals, especially just east of town and down closer to the coast. In general, we're probably talking about half an inch to an inch through Saturday morning. That includes with what we're expecting today. So there are some chances of rain here in the extended forecast uh, this afternoon again tomorrow. 30% chance Wednesday and then a 20% chance Thursday, Friday and Saturday. After that, temperatures get back to what we know, upper 90s, close to 100 by Sunday, guys. I'm liking that forecast with the rain chances. A lot Good. of rain icons and nothing above 99. There you go. Good Ooh. week. A group of Madison High School students will be spending this summer days raising livestock animals. After the break, a look at what their summer days will look like and how it's preparing them for future careers and opportunities. Well, some Madison High School students spending the dog days of summer with livestock. It's all a part of the AgriScience Magnet Program. Tiffany Huerta shows us how the program is helping the students learn discipline, responsibility, and a lot more, like racing. Right when he got off the trailer, he just took his time. He was the slowest pig, and he didn't have any rush in the world. Gracie Kearns felt an instant connection to this pig. She's already named him Todd. He's a sweetheart. He's just like, even like, see, he'll just get over and get a belly rub. Gracie is spending most of her days here. We come here from around 8 to 10-ish, and then 5 to 7. She is one of the students at Madison High School's AgriScience Magnet Program, who will be raised livestock and will compete in a school-wide show in October. I've never showed pigs before. This is my first year, so I'm really excited. Every day this summer, students will be learning about the pigs. They will be coming to this barn to feed, wash, and walk the pigs, and they will be looking for any health issues. One of the things that I'm going to teach y'all is how to find out for yourself. AgriScience teacher April Molitor says students will also learn about the different career paths they can take. I want to help educate the students on what those opportunities look like and find those kids that are passionate about the pork industry um, and really get them plugged into routes that could take them big places. These students will have the opportunity to compete in big shows like the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Gracie hopes to participate. I want to win like a big buckle and like money, definitely. 
<laughs> this summer will be one Gracie won't forget. It just makes me feel really like I have more of a purpose this summer instead of just like laying around, lounging, and it, like it just really is like really fun. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Those are some cool looking pigs. Those are some really cool. I like the name Todd. What a good name for a pig. Hamming it up. We know a couple of people that ham it up a little bit. <laughs> Hamming it up. I like Todd that. the pig. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We're, we're laughing at you guys. Oh, Hamming yeah. up and cooling you Ooh, down yes. today. You need something on a day like this. Yes, exactly. We have Andy's frozen custard here with us. A perfect day for that. And we have Joe joining us. And Catherine's doing the scooping over there. So custard, what exactly is it? Yeah, so you can think of custard as the high-end cousin of ice cream, right? Okay. So it's it's uh, it's incredible because it doesn't give you a brain freeze. And maybe we'll talk more about that. A no bit, brain a freeze from custard? No brain There's freeze a reason from custard. Why? You're gonna share keep, that. Keep scooping over there, Catherine. Oh, it looks amazing. Oh, that's an awesome. So hey, which brings to mind, when the ice cream truck came by, what was the one thing you oh had to get from the ice cream truck when yeah, you were a kid? Yeah. yeah. We'll answer that question coming up. Okay, need something nice and refreshing? How about just a tasty agua mm. fresca? How you can make this and where you can get it around town. Yes, those are so delicious. Yep. Also, speaking of going around town, if you're looking for places that offer free meals for kids, we've got you covered today with a handful of places. And Aaron Chase has some great ideas on some really uh, penny pinching and budget uh, meals. Also, Bubbles and Butters, love that name. <laughs> I like how you said that. Take care of your skin and yes. all this hot weather and everything like that. Mm -hmm. All really good stuff. And they yes, have indeed. a deal for SA Live viewers. You got to stick yep. around. So many things. Where's Did you start custard? eating now? I know. Huh? We're waiting. Yeah. All right. All that and more coming up on SA Live. Yeah. You gonna give me something? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, now let's look at the forecast. We're still sitting in the upper 90s, but we're watching. Uh, some activity starting to develop up there in the home country. We'll see more of it as we get into the afternoon and evening hours. A decent chance for some scattered downpours today. It'll be hit or miss. That'll be the case again tomorrow too. Some cooler temperatures, thankfully. 93 on your Tuesday. Some more small chances as we watch some tropical moisture get a little closer to us Wednesday, Thursday, and then by the weekend. Starts to heat back up when we lose our rain chances. So we'll keep our fingers crossed next couple days, guys. I'm liking those rain chances. I'm liking the 90s. You uh, can stick with it. I'm liking being able to eat something that's really cold and not get the brain freeze. Oh, yeah. I, I, so there's a picture works. of it over there, and I'm, my stomach is, is growling. That's not thunder outside. Def, <laughs> definitely works. And then, you know, when you ain't got much up there to begin with, it doesn't really matter. It can exactly. freeze a little, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mike and Fiona, SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Hello, happy Monday. I love the excitement. David and Lee there. Good afternoon. Thank oh, you, we got some Catherine. treats. Frozen treats just for him? No, you're going to share? Okay. I'm dead by his trusty, by the way. Can you host the show? <laughs> so, yeah. Where are you going? No, uh, get back uh, here. <laughs> er, look at no, and it's the, the no brain freeze here. Mm -hmm. Oh. We're going to be tasting all this in just a moment. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a really good afternoon. I'm Mike Oster Hage. We are all right. excited. Frozen custard, agua frescas, and got us thinking mm -hmm. when the ice cream truck came by when you were a kid, <sighs> what was the first thing that you had to go for, Jen? Yes, I always went for the, it was called a chango. So it's pickle juice, Lucas, and all this stuff. It's just very sour. Okay. But I look forward to that. What about you? The <laughs> strawberry shortcake. Oh, that's Sony a good on the list one. with those strawberry, you know, yes. and with the little crunchies on the outside yes. and everything like that. So. Remember the Ninja Turtle? That's it. Our director here, Tony, loves that Ninja Turtle one. The eyeball falls out. No? I think that was after my time when I was a little. <laughs> those are good. They're still around, by the way. And of course, the classic bomb pop. Well, let us know what your favorite was when you were chasing down the ice cream truck and getting some nice and cool. And we're going to be uh, showing those a little bit later on in the show. Okay, you know, one of the better parts of. The heat in South Texas, great place to set up shop if you make cold desserts. And our first guest is one of the newest spots in town where you can grab some delicious frozen oh, treats. Look how good that looks. Oh, Joe Shields from Andy's Frozen Custard is here. First of all, thank you for being here. Oh, We're excited. We've been me. picking. There's some stuff missing. I but let's talk about the desserts. What makes them stand out? Yeah, so Andy's frozen custard. We're, we're unlike any other place because uh, if you've had frozen custard from other places, they also seem to offer these things like burgers and mm -hmm. fries. Well, Andy's, our focus is solely on our frozen custard. So we offer vanilla and chocolate frozen custard, and that's it. Okay. That's it. 
And one of the best ways to do it is in the form of a... Sunday, yeah. So the good news is even though there's only two flavors we option, we've got all kinds of toppings and we actually bake fresh in-house our own shortcake, brownies, really? and waffle cones. So How what we're it, doing... Because oh, wow. I know yeah. you took a peek. So right here, this, short, this shortcake right here is baked in fresh. I didn't yet, but So I we've got in front of y'all, we're going to be making our famous strawberry shortcake. So you're mm. going to take the Sunday dish that's got our shortcake in it, put a nice mm. scoop of vanilla, on top and then scoop on some strawberries. Okay. Just sweeten up with that. Okay. There you go. And now back to the no brain freeze. Why do you not get brain freeze from eating custard? Yeah, well frozen custard, you know, I think uh, it'd be helpful to talk about. Really think of it as like ice cream, but ice cream that's just made fresh, right? So it's mm -hmm. a it's a it's a close cousin. It's a mm -hmm. little bit creamier, it's a little bit denser because we churn it slowly, but it's made fresh every single hour. So every hour. Every single hour. Wow. So I, I like to say is, you know, here in San Antonio, we love our tortillas. A tortilla off the Kamal yeah. is unbelievable and a lot better than I'd say one that comes prepackaged uh, on you a can shelf, tell right? The you can tell the oh, difference, yeah. right? So it's the same way with ice cream. But with our frozen custard, that's the that's made fresh every single hour. So my mouth and if is you watering. Do, if you do one thing, do one thing only, and do it really good. So okay. And what makes it what the difference with custard? It's more what egg in it or something. It like has that? a is little it? bit more egg yolk in it, which mm -hmm. helps make it creamier. But really, the secret sauce is mm -hmm. it's just churned very slowly. So there's very oh. little air in it, which okay. means you're getting more flavor. It's actually served at a higher temperature than mm -hmm. ice cream or any other frozen dessert. So it does melt quickly in our Texas as we're. Experiencing oh, right hey, now. Uh, Hello. Champagne bottle. Somebody just popped champagne you before. So. Gonna happen. Don't worry. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, so many different combinations. Okay, I will yes. admit, if my son, if you're watching at home, Rai Rai, hello. Hey, they're at Grandma's house, but uh, we've been there twice already. Yeah, the thank family, you. And he loves the Oreos. Now, you said that's one of the favorite toppings. That's, to that's the number one uh, topping we've got is Oreo. But uh, the good news is, even though we only serve vanilla and chocolate, we've got all kinds of toppings. And if you come up with it, we'll create it. You know, it is great because that, that denseness to the consistency, dense but nice and smooth to it so yes. uh, favorite topping is like we said is, is Oreo Oreos Oreo is the Swarms number one so okay. go ahead and, and add Oreo the good oh, news yeah. is thank you like I said you you come up with it we'll create it for you okay and now the nice thing is too you said it is a I mean like ice cream should be a really good family environment just go up there with the family and a, a nice evening treat right absolutely so that's that's honestly that's the best part about Andy's is we know you've got lots of places in town we got some great places to go get a frozen treat Andy's was created to be a place where you can take the family and come and make new memories together. So San Antonio, it's a place where we bond over food, right? And so this is an opportunity for us to bond over a delicious cold treat when it's really hot outside. So bring the family, we've got a great patio, we've got a great turf area in the back. Come on out, get a frozen treat. Especially, you should really bring your pets because the good thing oh, is, yes, if I you see that, that tiny little little cone over there, you bring your dog. <laughs> we'll make we'll we'll give it a little scoop of vanilla custard right on the top there, and your your pup can enjoy Mike thought some happened frozen happened custard also. To that cone, but it's perfect. That's a perfect size <laughs> for the dryer yeah. some more when I got there. And the nice thing too is, if you get that that little craving and that hankering for frozen custard, um, almost in the middle of the night. Yes, they can hours. take care of you. That's Summer right, hours. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got long hours. We're open every day until 11.30 p.m., but on Friday and Saturday, we're open until midnight. So wow. it's, a great, it's a great place. We're uh, located in front of Bass Pro at the rim. Mm -hmm. So we've got a speedy drive-through. We've got walk-up windows. Mm -hmm. It's a great place where if you go with the family to Six Flags or you go see a movie at the Palladium, stop on by afterwards and cool off with a great, great treat. And new to San Antonio, because how long have you guys been open It now? is, we've been only open for a month, so only open for 30 days, but uh, How's it going? it's, one of it's been popular. good. It's, it's been busy. We're actually, we're proud to say we're the uh, the single busiest Andes in the state of Texas. So we're, I think we're resonating wow. and people are seeing that it's, it's the perfect place to come uh, on date night, uh, come for any occasion, any celebration, and we'll treat you to some great frozen custard. Do you have what? a favorite on the menu? So my favorite is, we, on the menu we have a treat called the Snow Monster. So the Snow Monster is a concrete vanilla custard blended with strawberries and melted chocolate chip. And the melted chocolate chip is really good. Ooh. It's literally melted chocolate chips melted down. We pour it into uh, the cup and we blend it all together and that chocolate flash freezes into little chocolate shards throughout it. So that's my personal, personal favorite. And then you make root beer floats and cream soda floats with custard. We too, do, right? absolutely, okay. absolutely. Oh. And all of these treats over here, I know we're out of time here, but this so this is just a selection. Yeah, just a selection yep. of some of our different treats right now. We've got uh, any kind of sundae, we've got our concretes. We also have a unique to Andy's only, a jackhammer, which is a concrete where we drill a hole in the center and fill it with anything you want. Hot fudge, creme caramel, Ooh. even waffle cone pieces down the center. 
All right, as you can see, plenty of options. I did try the jitterbug that had coffee in it. That was delicious too. So. All right, of course it had coffee. You can try Andy's frozen custard yourself at their location at the Rim Shopping Center right in front of Bass Pro Shops. And for more information, head over to salive.com. You can click the As Seen on SA Live tab or scan that code right on your screen. Woo, Shortcake delicious. is really good. Well, Custard's good too, but shortcake's <laughs> really good. So thank you very much. All right, San Antonio Zoo. Family favorites, speaking of family places to go to, mm -hmm. it's a great destination all year long. You know, but you go in the summertime, you gotta find a place to keep cool and have a wildly fun time. <laughs> yes, I had the tough assignment. I had a great time <laughs> going out there to check out all the different cool zones. Take a look. Summer fun at the San Antonio Zoo isn't just outdoors. They have plenty of new cool attractions. Let's go see how we can chill out. Ah, oh, feels good. All these misters, love it. Oh, it's definitely cooler in here. It feels great, but we also get to see Timothy and his grandma. Look how cute they are. I could be here all day. What to do next? Hmm. Oh, hey, hey, where are you at? Okay, 40 Theater. Oh, you want me to go there? You'll be there. That's where I'm going. Okay, we're getting ready now to watch a show at the Project Selva 4D Theater, right by the zoo's Great Lake. And joining me now is Hope Roth. Hope, I'm so excited to be here. We're so excited <laughs> to have you, Pat. And this I've never experienced at the zoo. Let's talk about what a 4D theater is for those who don't know. Absolutely, it's brand new, first of all. We're so excited. Imagine bubbles and wind and spray, and you might get a little tickle around your <laughs> ankles, and those chairs shake, and there might be a few other surprises, but it's truly an immersive experience for the movie. Got it. All the different senses, right? Yeah. Love that. Now, what kind of shows can people watch here? Okay, right now we're showing two. We've got Aquaman, which we all know and love. Favorite. And remember, these are condensed versions. So these movies are going to run between 18 and 20 minutes. And then we also have a mission-based movie called Planet Earth 2, which nice. really focuses on the reason why you come to the zoo. Mm -hmm. That ticket is just the tip of the iceberg to help us with conservation and securing a future for wildlife for sure i love that y'all are reiterating that here at the 4d theater now we know it's hot in texas what are some other ways to cool off here at the san antonio zoo so you might think it's going to be too hot to come but with this 4d theater and all of our inside from the aquarium to visiting timothy to our <laughs> new touch tanks and amphibia we have so many places to cool off inside <laughs> and all the cool new things that we have to showcase i love that it does feel good here i will say under the shade and you have some deals for our viewers. Let's talk about those. We are so excited. So kick off your July 4th weekend early mm -hmm. and we're having a red, white and zoo sale. So come this summer, but you're going to want to come back for Zoo Boo and you're going to want to come back for Zoo Life. So an annual membership is really the way to go and you can get that right now at 20% off. You just go on to SAZoo.org and enter the promo code EAGLE. Again, kick off your 4th of July weekend with a spark. Save 20% on annual memberships with the Red, White, and Zoo offer at the San Antonio Zoo. It's available through July 4th. And make sure you use the code EAGLE at the checkout to get that discount. For more information, visit SAZoo.org. Always a great time at the zoo. I had a blast. It didn't feel like work, but I love the 4D theater. You have snow coming out. The, oh, really? The chair shaking when the eagle is about to get his prey. Um, so just it's really cool. I highly recommend that. And it was very cold <laughs> in there. So yeah, you get a little break from the sun. And then also the train. Yes, classic. You know, that's kind of, yeah, yes. you got to ride the train. Yeah, so My many fun things. Again, salive.com for more information. Scan that QR code. All well. right, still ahead on SA Live. These aren't your grandma's aqua frescas. We check out some of the funky flavors from these local drink makers and how they're putting a twist on the traditional. Plus, prices everywhere have been skyrocketing. We could use a little help. So we found a list of local restaurants where kids eat for free. But first, between the sun, pool, heat, summer can be really hard on your skin. These handmade products from a local shop that can help your skin stay healthy and look really good. That's next on SA Live.